Hello and welcome students and representatives to this virtual college fair. Students, just so you know, your camera and microphone are turned off so panelists cannot see or hear you. If you wanna ask questions, simply use the Q&A button on your screen to pose a question to any of the presenters. Please sign up for more sessions. This is just one of the many available. Um, my name is Mackenzie. I'm gonna be facilitating this Zoom today and a recording will be available of this session if you are not able to attend or if you're not able to attend the whole thing at strivescan.com slash Burlington. So with that, we are going to go ahead and get started with the University of Delaware. Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is John Kogan, and I am one of the admissions counselors here at the University of Delaware. I'm very excited to share a little bit about it about our university. Um, I have also just put in the chat a couple different links. Um, you'll be able to also see these links at the very end of the presentation. Um, but a little bit about me, I am a proud UD alum. I am from the class of 2018. I'm also the proud sibling of a current UD student. I am originally from the great state of Connecticut and now reside in the state of Delaware. So I know exactly what it's like to be applying to a public university as an out of state resident. Um, we are really proud of the fact that we are located in one of the greatest places um, it, all along the East Coast, right in the Mid-Atlantic region. Um, Newark, Delaware is about 45 minutes from Philadelphia, about an hour from Baltimore, about an hour and a half to Washington, D.C., and then just over, to two, uh, just over two hours to New York City. Uh, Delaware has some really fantastic uh, opportunities, including uh, really amazing state parks that are directly on our campus. Um, a amazing esports arena that just opened right before the pandemic. We have a beautiful main street in which you are able to really experience life outside of the classroom without having to go that far away. If you want some ice cream, you can head down to your dairy creamery uh, on our south campus where they make ice cream from cow to cone. So it's fresh dairy coming right from the cows made uh, in, uh, in at the university by our students and served to you uh, with all sorts of wacky delicious flavors. Um, we are really a place where students are able to do a lot and be able to travel lots of places. You are able to have a lot of fantastic internship opportunities because of our location as well. You're able to bring a car to campus as early as your first year. And we have both SEPTA and Amtrak train stations on our campus, as well as a mega, box, mega bus and Flix bus stop on our campus. If you're interested in learning about all the different curriculums that we offer here at UD, uh, you can head to our website, udell.edu backslash major finder. Uh, this provides information all about the different experiences that we offer here at UD, as we have over 150, 150 different majors. We also offer over 50 different minors and over 10 different four plus one programs. And uh, this allows for students to really mix and match their curriculum to cater it exactly to what they need. And you're able to, um, using this website, um, get a brief synopsis of the major, get a sample curriculum, see clubs and extracurricular activities associated with the major, and also see the careers and outcomes of our students that um, they've had after graduation. Uh, tied to our outcomes is our outcomes website. You can head directly through our this uh, link or you can find it through your major finder. Um, this provides you the opportunity to learn all about um, what our students are doing after they graduate. This has information and data on the percentage of students who are graduating within six months and either employed or pursuing further education. Um, in the past six years or so, the average has hovered between 90 to 95%, 90% only happening last year in 2020 due to the global pandemic. But on average, we generally around 95%, which is far beyond above the national average for success post-graduation. So we're really proud of the fact that that means that our students are really finding jobs that they're enjoying and uh, are able to do so very quickly. Definitely check out the website. It's a lot of really great resources and it really proves that the return on investment at UD is well worth the cost of your education. Your education isn't just going to be about the classes that you take, but it's also going to be about the opportunities that you can uh, take to enrich and expand your education. Um, these are going to be programs such as our Honors College, our World Scholars Program, and our Scholars and Fellows Programs, um, which really uh, add extra layers to your curriculum. The Honors College and the World Scholars Program are um, 
four-year programs. They're very well structured and you're going to be pretty busy with both of them the whole time. Honors is obviously a similar to what you're thinking about when it comes to being part of an honor society or uh, taking honors and AP courses, you're gonna be taking larger classes. You have additional opportunities and experiences that are available to you. World Scholars is all about uh, study abroad. It is the opportunity to not only study abroad during your junior year of college, but also during your freshman year of college. You apply to this program, you are um, you are never forced into this program, you apply to it, and you get the opportunity to study abroad not only in junior year, but in your freshman year in either Spain, Italy, Greece, or New Zealand. And then you pick what you want, where you want to go your senior, uh, junior year. You get a lot of really fantastic resources. And if you don't want to do that, you can choose to just do a normal study abroad experience. Every single major at UD can study abroad. Our Scholars and Fellows program is a bit of a unique experience. It's a combination, uh, as I like to describe it, between a minor and an extracurricular activity. You take a mix of some courses, you get to participate in extracurricular activities, you get to have guest speakers come in, and they're all about different topics. So I highly recommend you head to our enrichment website to learn more about all the different experiences that we have to offer. When it comes to applying, the important thing to remember is that we utilize the Common App or the Coalition Application Essay. We are test optional for 2020 uh, for students who are applying for 2022 or 2023. And then you can find all of our requirements on our admissions requirements website. We have both early action and regular admission deadlines, which you can see here, and really allows for you to uh, pick and choose the best timeline for you. And definitely make sure to check out all of our resources on our website today. Again, my name is John Kogan, and you can email me at jkogan at udel.edu. Thanks so much. Thanks, John. Up next, we have Rowan University. Good evening, everyone. My name is Milana He. I am a freshman admissions counselor at Rowan University. I am also a Rowan University alum. I graduated in 2011 and just returned back to Rowan in 2021. I'm gonna share my screen to go over the presentation for you. Okay, so something about Rowan is we are in the center of pretty much everything. We are located in Glassboro, New Jersey. We are about 20 minutes away from Philadelphia, an hour away from the Jersey Shore Lines, two hours from New York City, and two and a half hours from Washington, D.C. This makes our campus unique because we are so close to Philadelphia. We will, there's a lot of internship opportunities for you within the city. We have about five different campus locations. We have our main campus, which is our Glassboro campus. We have our Camden campus, which is in Camden, New Jersey. It's mainly for students that are from Camden County and from the Camden city. However, if you are a student at the Glassboro campus, you are able to take classes at the Camden campus. At the Camden campus, there are about five different degrees that are offered there on the undergraduate level. We have our West Campus in Mellica Hill, and we have our Cooper Medical School of Rowan University in Cooper, I'm sorry, in Camden, New Jersey. And then we have our Rowan University School of Osteopathic Medicine, which is in Stratford, New Jersey. Um, some campus highlights. So we have a planetarium. For those who aren't, aren't sure what a planetarium is, that's something that makes your astronomy classes more fun. Um, you're able to look at the stars and you're, it, you're able to see the different stars in the sky as well as the different planets. Um, something else that we have is our fossil park, which is new to Rowan as well. We have dig days at the fossil park and they're also going to make the fossil park a museum as well. Um, here are different schools and colleges at Rowan. We have over about 74 different majors at Rowan. I'll give you some time to look at it just in case you have any questions later. Our student enrollment profile. So we have students from about 50 states and 40 different countries. We have, have about 15,963 undergraduate students, 2,500 graduate students, and 1,249 students. And this is all campuses combined. Um, that brings us to over about 20,000 students. Um, we have an 86% freshman retention rate, which means that students are coming to campus their freshman year, they're enjoying it and they're returning. Um, we are a medium sized campus, which means you will not find um, a lot of students in your classroom. You'll find about 20 students in your classroom. Um, we also do have study abroad. However, I'm not sure how that looks now with COVID, but we have about 200 different programs and they visit about 40 different countries. 
Um, we have many different pathways that you can get into Rowan University. We have our degree in three program. This program is for students that are interested in earning their degree within three years or less, three years. Within this program, you are in school year round, meaning that you will be in school for fall, spring and summer. You have about two weeks in the summer to yourself and then you're right back at the, um, the program. The degree in three program is not offered for every single major offhand right now I can name radio, TV, film and English. We also have our three plus four medical program. This is an accelerated medical um, program. We have our Rowan Choice program where we partner with Rowan College of South Jersey. Um, within that partnership of Rowan College of South Jersey, you are a Rowan College of South Jersey student. However, you are taking the opportunity to live at Rowan University's campus and participate in all the activities that Rowan University has to offer besides Greek life and Division Three sports. We have Ascend, which is our EOF program. EOF, if, if you're not aware of EOF, is located in 42 different colleges and states colleges within the state of New Jersey. It's a grant funded program. And then we have our Rowan at Home program. Our Rowan at Home program is for students. It was birthed out of COVID. It's for students that want to learn at home and be strictly at home. Um, first year application. So I always um, suggest that everyone apply before January 31st. Applying for January 31st gives you a merit scholarship consideration. Anytime after that, you may not be considered for the merit scholarship. We are on Common App and we do have a Rowan University application. Um, our application fee is $65. We do require your high school transcript. We are a test optional school. We're a test optional if you um, are not interested in the three plus four program, if you're not a student that has a GED or if you're not a homeschool student. Um, we do need letters of recommendation. We, re we request that you submit two letters of recommendation. And if you're a student that's interested in theater art or music, we do require that you submit an audition or a portfolio. If you're interested in transferring to Rowan, you could submit a free application for transfer. Can you see that below? Um, once you do apply to Rowan University, you will receive a status page and within the status page, um, we will let you know whether you're missing anything from your application. If you are missing anything, you'll see that all on your application. Once you do apply to Rowan and you do get accepted, your acceptance will be on your status page. And once you are accepted, you'll see everything that Rowan needs from you um, regarding your acceptance. Here's some numbers. So our in-state tuition is about $14,376. Our room and board is $10,700. That's an average number. So that means that that number can go up and down depending on where you choose to live. Um, when you do come to Rowan University, that brings our number to $25,076. I'm sorry. I know I don't have that much time. Um, and that's, I will go, I will be done. And if you have any more questions, you can, ask me at the end. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now we will turn it over to the College of New Jersey. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you for your willingness to learn about the College of New Jersey and all the other great schools that are re represented here tonight. Uh, as I get my presentation up, I already went ahead and just dro dropped a bunch of great resources in the chat. You have my contact information, you have visit links both on campus and virtual for TCNJ. We're doing a ton of great programming this fall, so we definitely hope you'll come check us out. Uh, let's see here. Let's just jump right into the presentation. Okay. So again, I'm representing TCNJ, the College of New Jersey tonight. Uh, my name is Stephen Tomkeel. I am the Senior Admissions Counselor for the College of New Jersey. I am a graduate alumnus for TCNJ. I, I do work as an adjunct faculty member in our writing program as well. Uh, I should also mention I am an undergraduate alumnus of the University of Delaware and a current doctoral candidate at Rowan University. So I think I'm pretty uniquely positioned to tell you, you got a ton of great options for higher education represented here tonight. Um, and, and that's not even including, you know, I, I could also shout out Ryder and Elon and, and Catholic University of America, all great schools. You're going to find a great fit. I know that for a fact. Um, but really, I just want to talk about what's going to make TCNJ a little bit different, what's going to make us stand out in the larger higher education landscape. Um, and right out of the gate, I think one thing that does make us really different is that um, we are a public institution, right? It's right in our name, the College of New Jersey, but for a public school, we're a little bit smaller in terms of size. So there's right around 7,000 undergraduate students on our campus. That translates to a student faculty ratio of 13 to 1, 13 students for every professor, average class size in a classroom, right around 20, 21 students. Uh, I think potentially the even more meaningful data point that I can share is that you will never see a classroom space at TCNJ that's going to go beyond about 35 or 40 students. 
we don't have that big 200 person lecture hall. It is not our style at TCMJ. And so really what I'm trying to kind of drill down to here is that even though we are a public institution, when you come to our campus, if you're walking around the green, if you're in the classroom, TCNJ feels more intimate, it feels more close knit. We might honestly remind you of some of the excellent private institutions that you're looking at through your search process. Uh, but because we are a public school at the end of the day, we give you all the major resources and opportunities that people expect from the big, big public schools. We have excellent study abroad offerings, great internship connections being right in between New York City and Philadelphia. Uh, all of our faculty are doing undergraduate research and they're pulling exclusively from our undergraduate students to support them in projects. Uh, nursing clinicals, student teaching opportunities, you know, all those major resources, you get access to everything, but because we're smaller, you have more direct access uh, and you have a higher level of support resources you have the advisor from your major faculty mentors you connect with in the classroom career centers and for student success you get this huge talented team behind you to keep you moving forward keep you motivated and engaged as you work towards identifying and achieving your academic professional and personal goals um, the other pieces of public school that I should mention, of course, is that we are going to be lower cost than most private institutions. So right now for a New Jersey resident, uh, tuition at TCNJ, about $17,000 per year. Uh, if you're living on campus, doing the meal plan, room board, about another $14,000. So total costs are going to start right around $31,000, $32,000 a year before we talk about any kind of merit scholarship or need-based aid. Uh, so again, we kind of see ourselves occupying a best of both worlds model in between the public and private models of education, again, small and intimate like the private, but with big opportunities and low costs like the public. That's something that people have taken notice of. Uh, we're often getting shouted out in Money Magazine. We've been rated the number one public college and university for our size range. So if you're thinking about that, not too big, not too small, just right size college, TCNJ is known as an incredible return on investment in that type of environment. Um, but beyond kind of the nitty gritty stats, I think the overarching theme that makes CCNJ stand out is that we create incredibly personalized experiences for our students. And let me just talk about a couple of the different ways that we make that happen. Um, so one of the ways right out of the gate is going to be your classroom experience. And, and, and no matter which of our 50 plus different majors that you choose, or if you come in undeclared, or if you pursue a self-design major and kind of build something out yourself, no matter what program you're in, you're going to benefit from those small classes. I've benefited from that both as a student and as an instructor. I remember when I was doing my graduate program, I had a class one time that was four students. And like, you can probably tell I like to talk. So like I was I was living it up in that four version class, right? I had a ball. Um, conversely, when I was teaching, I teach our first year writing program. So one of the most required fundamental courses, you know, tons and tons of students taking this course, but TCNJ always facilitates enough instructors and enough course sections that when I'm in front of my class, I have 16 students in the classroom with me. So I know who everybody is. I'm ready to connect with people if they miss class one night, we get it together, we make a plan for office hours. So when you have a direct connection with faculty, you're more empowered to ask questions, be a part of the discussion, be a leader in the classroom, get help when you need it. It really just helps to streamline everything in terms of kind of uh, finding your bearing in that academic space. Another big way that we let you personalize what you do at TCNJ uh, is comes down to the types of credits you're gonna pursue. So a big takeaway here is that for most majors, roughly one third of the credits that you're gonna pursue for graduation are entirely in the elective space. A third of what you do is choose your own adventure. Find the topics that interest you, get outside your major. We see so many students at TCNJ, double major, major and one or two or three minors. Uh, we'll see students pursuing Spanish language and culture while also doing science prerequisite courses for med school. So whatever you're interested in, we're gonna work that into your four years. Uh, of course, another big part of that is relevant field experience and professional development. This is something that every TCNJ student takes advantage of. So typical business student doing two or more internships by the time they graduate, typical science student uh, doing two or more semesters of research one-on-one -on -one with their professors, student teachers in the classroom by year two, nursing students getting over 400 hours of clinical experience by the time they graduate. Um, so these are just a couple of the major ways that we help you really build a personalized and meaningful undergraduate career. I could go on if I had more time, I could talk about our excellent uh, extracurricular options, our excellent division. Vision 3 varsity program, awesome study abroad offerings. But I tell you what, if you have questions about that, and I certainly hope you do, find a chance to get in touch, come to one of our events, check out our online and on-campus offerings. Uh, there's tons more to learn about TCNJ, and I encourage you to do that. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night. Thank you very much. And up next, we have Catholic, or, yeah, the Catholic University of America. Hi everyone, thank you for coming tonight. Um, I'll begin by introducing myself. My name is Rachel Badalato. I am a senior admission counselor at Catholic University and I'm also a proud alum. I graduated in the class of 2018. 
Um, I'm from this area, I'm from Cherry Hill, so I know what it's like. Um, but Catholic University is just two and a half um, hours away and also an Amtrak train away, which is really nice and convenient. But now I'll go ahead and share my presentation. All right, so just a little bit of quick facts about us. So we currently have about a student body of 3,100 undergraduate students. Out of that number, 80% do identify as Catholic. However, you don't have to be Catholic to attend the Catholic University of America. We welcome all faiths and backgrounds. However, we are very proud of our Catholic identity because it does enrich a lot of experiences inside and outside the classroom when you're a student here. Out of that number, we also have 27% ethically diverse and um, we do have students from 4% of international um, areas as well. We were founded as a research heavy graduate institution. So research is something that's very important to us here at Catholic. We do have 31 on camp, 34 on campus research centers for our community to partake in. And each year we have something called an annual research day where anyone in the community can show off any research projects they've been working on throughout the school year. Um, you're gonna have a good transition from high school to college here at Catholic because the average class size is 19 students. So it is a very personalized academic experience. Your professors will know you on a name to name basis. If you have any um, things outside the classroom, just like high school, your teachers know you are exactly how your professors are gonna know you here at Catholic. Uh, we are the largest and greenest campus in DC. So we have 176 acres of green space. Um, so it is really nice having the best of both worlds where we're still in the city of Washington, DC, um, having that green traditional quiet college campus, but then we also have the city right in our backyard to explore. Here's just some of the things that we can get involved in once you're a student here at Catholic. We have a very fun, high energy campus. Uh, so we have 100 plus student clubs and organizations and every student can create their own club or organization here at Catholic. Um, with that, we also have about 40 to 50 events each week. Once you're a student at Catholic, you'll get an email every Monday of just all the events that are going on on campus, whether it's on campus or even in DC. And in addition to that, campus ministry holds most of our service events. So we have more than 50 service options each week for our students and community. Um, and then we also have two days in the fall, one day in the fall and one day in the spring, two days in the whole um, academic year, where the whole university can do service together. And then we do have 25 Division III varsity teams. So since we are the D3 level, we do not give scholarships for athletics. Um, however, we are really proud of our athletics. About 30% of our students are on the varsity level. And in the past five years, we've had 16 conference championships. Um, if you don't want to be on the varsity level, we have nine club sports, 16 intramural leagues, and two fitness centers on campus. So life in the nation's capital. So we have a really great advantage of being in uh, D.C. Um, so once you're here at Catholic, there's going to be so many different things you can do. And to help you get into the city, we have our own metro stop right on our campus called Brooklyn CUA. You could take that three stops down. You're already in uh, Washington, D.C. in the heart of it. You can hop off there if you have an internship on the hill or an internship in the area. If you want to hop on the Amtrak to get back home. So it's very, very convenient to get into the city and having this own metro stop right on our campus because the metro gives you access to the entire city. So talking about internships, um, we do have a department called the Center for Academic and Career Success. Um, a lot of different colleges will have a separate office for academic success and a separate office for uh, career success. So here at Catholic, we combine the two and you'll have an undergraduate advisor that will view through for all four years. Um, I mentioned internships because this department really helps with internship opportunities and helping you find one. You will have no problem getting one. About 80% of our students um, complete an internship by the time they graduate Catholic. We have 3,000 plus internship opportunities for our students, whether that's in DC or also they can help with internships when you want to go home for your summer break. Here's a list of our nine undergraduate schools of study. When you're applying to Catholic, you'll be applying directly to your major and to your undergraduate school. I'll go over the application review of how we actually review your application after you submit it on the Common App. So every student that applies to Catholic, we will do um, recalculate your GPA on an unweighted 4.0 scale. So we'll take majority of your classes from freshman to junior year, maybe senior year, if we have those first semester or quarter one grades yet, recalculate those. And then once we do that, we'll have an overall GPA. 
we'll have a GPA for each subject, and we'll have an EPA for each year in high school. So that's the first thing. The second thing is the strength of curriculum from what your high school offers. So if you're in any AP, honors, IB courses, we'll also rank that and take that into consideration. So we do a very, very thorough examination of your high school transcript. So since we do that, we are test blind. We are asking, please don't even send in your test scores because they're not part of our academic review and they're not part of merit scholarships either. So we feel very confident just reviewing your, um, merit, um, your, your high school transcript. Um, not only are academics important, but we also do a more holistic review. And our first deadline is November 1st. Um, next steps, just to wrap everything up, we are gonna be doing some high school visits. It's gonna be in person. We're also doing virtual visits as well. You could do interviews virtually, or you can um, be in the regional uh, interview with your admission counselor, follow us on social media, and then we'll be having another open house on October 23rd. All right, thank you so much, Rachel. Up next, we have Ryder University. Be helpful if I unmuted myself. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Jessica Vento. I'm the Assistant Director of Undergraduate Admission at Ryder University. Um, I just threw some info into the chat um, that could be really helpful as I go through my presentation. Um, so one quick thing to know about myself is that I actually am the person who will be reviewing your application when the time comes around. Um, like a, a lot of my colleagues on this call, I also am a Rider alum, so it's really great to work at the college you went to, as you can see. Um, so to start out, our campus is right in Lawrenceville, New Jersey, so we're about 25 minutes from Northern Burlington. Um, what's also nice is that as a private university, we are a very much a smaller size institution. So we have about 3,600 students on our campus. So it's not too big, it's not too small. You really feel like you can make a new friend whenever you're walking around. But you also will see a ton of familiar faces, which can be very uh, heartwarming as you're beginning your college career. Uh, from there, our average class size is about 17 students. And then from there, our student to faculty ratio is about 11 to one. So to give you an idea, we have over 70 majors. So you can just, you know, kind of take it all in on the screen. There's a lot to look at, um, but I will tell you quickly, some of our, you know, mo most well-known programs would be um, accounting, our musical theater program is fantastic, um, as well as education, um, computer science and criminal justice and psychology are some of our most popular liberal arts majors, as well as biology. So one thing that makes Ryder pretty unique um, in comparison to a lot of colleges is that we do have the Engage Learning Program. And what that means is we require you to get involved in college. So you can't just sit around in your dorm room and pretend that you know, college is just going to happen for you. You have to get involved, um, whether it's doing a service project with um, the Bonner Community Scholars, as an example, or doing research with a faculty member, as you can see on my on your screen, um, or, you know, doing an internship in New York City, which is very accessible to our campus, as well as Philadelphia. Um, so those are just a few things to think about as you're choosing your college, because you want to make sure you putting, you're putting yourself out there. Um, and it's, it's for the best, which is really exciting. So if you didn't know, um, Ryder is a Division I university for athletics. So um, you can see that Stella Johnson was the first um, Ryder uh, graduate to get into the WNBA, which was really amazing. Um, all of our uh, sports for bas basketball, men's and women's are featured on ESPN. Um, so there's a lot of greatness to that. And you can receive an athletic scholarship if you are recruited for one of our Division I sports. And with COVID last year and all the challenges we faced, three of our teams won their championships, which were field hockey, um, baseball, and volleyball, which was really exciting. So in terms of important dates to think about as you're going through your uh, college admissions process, the first one is gonna be November 15th. So what that is, is early action. Um, Ryder does not have any binding um, options. So this is just a, we're applying, we're getting our decision early. There are no strings attached, which is wonderful. 
And the bonus is that if you complete the FAFSA, which opens up on Friday, which is a super fun fact, um, you also will receive your financial aid package early. So as a private college, you wanna know how much is it gonna cost? What are the dollars and cents? And if you apply early on, you can have everything in front of you, which is a pretty sweet deal if you ask me. And kind of going off of that, these are our scholarships that we offer. So right now our scholarships run from 12 to $21,000 per year. Um, it is based off your high school performance. So as you are looking at this, you'll also see a ton of other options for scholarships too, but the ones I just listed are based on your application. So we are Common App exclusive. That is the only way you will be applying to Rider University. Our average GPA is a 3.4. Our average uh, uh, SAT score is an 1120 and 23 ACT. We are a test optional university. So if you do not want to submit your test scores, you do not have to, which is great for you if you don't wanna do that. Um, and with that being said, we'll look at your whole high school performance, determine what scholarship you receive, and then go from there. Um, and we will also look over your one letter of recommendation that's required, as well as your essay that you chose for your common app. Um, other things to pay attention to on this slide is that we offer two different full tuition scholarship opportunities. So the trustee scholarship is awarded to 10 students each year. Um, it is more involved in terms of applying for it and you do have to meet certain criteria. So typically those students are, you know, the top tier of their um, graduating class, which is amazing. And I did throw a link in the chat so you can see all the nitty gritty details. Um, and then the Norm Brodsky College of Business is open to anyone who has that Shark Tank mentality. Um, so there's a ton of options that you'll have for scholarships. And then last but not least, we have so many visit opportunities. And I can't stress this enough that visiting is going to help when making your decision. And we do have a $1,000 textbook incentive. So if you visit Ryder University three times before May 1st for all you seniors here, um, and you decide on Rider, you will receive $1,000 towards your textbooks for your freshman year. So I hope to see you on campus very soon. And if you need me, you know how to contact me. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And last but not least, we have Elon University. Alrighty, good evening, everyone. My name is Tokumi Olalia, and I'm one of the assistant directors of admissions at Elon. And I work with students from New Jersey and Eastern Pennsylvania. So excited to be here to talk a bit more about Elon with you all. You might have noticed that I went ahead and put some information in the chat that you can use to interact with us and also learn more about Elon as well. So we'll begin by talking about where Elon is located. So we are centrally located in North Carolina. Um, and let me get this slide going here. You can see on the map here that we are centrally located. So we have the Greensboro, the Charlotte area, and the Raleigh-Durham area surrounding us, which are all gonna be major cities in North Carolina that create a space for students to kind of hang out and explore while also having internship opportunities and then job placement once they graduate, about two and a half hours away from the mountains and then about three hours away from the coast. And we are a medium-sized private institution, so around around 6,300 students, which I describe as being that perfect number where you can develop those close-knit relationships and bonds while likely meeting a new student every day that you're on campus. So students represented from various states and also countries, around 7% of our students are international students, 18% of our students are identifying as students of color, and then 76% are coming from out of state. So heavy enrollment in the Northeastern regions, but then also strong enrollment on the West Coast and then internationally in the Midwest as well. And this video here just kind of brings a bit of campus to you today as we're talking. Um, so hopefully kind of intrigues you to visit us and we are open in, in allowing in-person visits and have a couple open house dates as well. And then shifting to that academic experience, the biggest piece being when you apply to Elon, you're gonna be applying to us as a whole rather than to a specific school or program. So you actually have until the midway point of your sophomore year to officially declare a major. So you can see our schools listed here. Great thing also is that you're actually encouraged to explore within schools. So you can have a major in two different schools and then a minor in a third school. 
And all of these schools are gonna give you those high impact practices, which really allow for you to apply the amazing knowledge that you're learning inside the classroom to these real world environments outside of the classroom. Some of our most popular majors being finance, strategic communication, psychology, biology, and then history as well. Again, you can see here, Elon is committed to providing those smaller and engaging classroom environments. I love the picture in the background there because it shows you what the classroom environment can look like. Group discussions, actually being involved in the material that you're learning, which will hopefully lead to that retention and developing that deeper understanding of that material that you're learning. Your classes are capped at 33, meaning it'll never get bigger than 33, 20, 21 students in an average class. And then our Coinsberger Learning Center has various um, tutoring support, writing center, and then disability and academic support as well. And then shifting a bit to outside the classroom, we have these Elon experiences, which really allow for you to apply that information that you're learning. So we have our students are actually required to complete two out of the five that you see here as a part of graduation requirements. Oops, sorry. So first one being leadership, around 70% of students will hold a leadership camp role on campus. Around the 20% for research, your work will actually be published in a journal. 88% of students will complete a service project. And we also have really unique service projects abroad as well. 87% of students will complete at least one internship, many of which are leading to the job offers they receive once they graduate. And then we have around 80% of our students studying abroad at least once. So over 140 different study abroad programs to choose from. We have centers abroad in Shanghai, China, in Florence, Italy, in New Zealand, and in London. And then also some centers abroad in the US. So in Los Angeles, New York, and Washington, DC. And that has a really cool internship component associated with it. So you're guaranteed these impact practices where you can really experience things outside of yourselves and use those to allow you to shape the under, your understanding of the world and how you interact with it. And then campus life, student life, we have three different dining halls. Each one has different themes and there's various retail restaurants. And then you're gonna have that community-based experience. So we are a residential campus. You're required to live on campus your first two years, but beyond that, around 65% of students will choose to live on campus all four years. And then 284 clubs and organizations to choose from, many of which have been started and created by students. And then Division I Athletics and the Coalition Athletic Association and all games and events are free for you as students. So you have access to, to take part in these great experiences outside the classroom. And then what does that Elon experience lead to? That return on investment, which we've all talked about today, these outstanding outcomes. So you're gonna be working in your field and doing jobs, taking internship positions, service and leadership. We wanna make sure that we're preparing you to be success successful on campus, but then once you leave that environment of college as well. And our Student Professional Development Center are amazing resources. They do mock interviews, resume prep, advising sessions, but then also provide support for our alumni as well. So it's a lifelong support system, whether you just wanna freshen up on professional skills or need help finding a job, you have access to them as long as you need them. And then application process, we are on the Common App and Elon application, no preference between the two. You can see our deadlines there, early decision is binding, meaning that you sign an agreement stating that if you're admitted, you'll be attending. So kind of reserve for if this Elon is your top choice. Early action is non-binding and so is regular deadline. We do have a holistic review process, meaning that we're going through and looking at your transcript, your school report, your essay, demonstrated interest, and a combination of things so that we give, your reviewing your applications through the lens of your entire experience. You can see our mid-ranges there. All of our scholarship applications are due January 17th. And then I have our various scholarship programs listed for you all here. We have an honors, honors program. Each one of these will come with a one-time study abroad grant as well and a four-year annual scholarship. So additional information is on our website. And of course, you're welcome to reach out to me if you have any additional questions afterwards. But I will go ahead and stop sharing my screen and then hand it back over. Thank you, everyone. Um, we do have a couple extra minutes, so I wanted to 
pose a question to our presenters, just for everyone to answer, if you could turn your screens back on. And whoever wants to start, what is some advice that you would give to someone going through the college search process? Go ahead. Um, my biggest piece of advice would to be to definitely utilize the resources around you. So starting with your college counselors and your high schools, whether that be family and those who have gone through this process, but then each one of us as well who are here today, we're here to assist you and provide any guidance that we can as you navigate the, the college application process and search process, which we understand is, is exciting, but also kind of scary at the same time. A piece of advice that I personally would give is um, take your time. This is not a, a hundred meter sprint. This is a long distance run. You've got a lot of things that are gonna be happening in your normal high school career. You've got four years of crazy things happening. You've got classes, you've got extracurricular activities, you've got everything. But you also um, have your academic, your academics are gonna play a super big role in our admissions decision. So really thinking the long game, thinking about um, studying that extra half an hour once a week for those classes that maybe you need a little bit more time in to get those grades up. And then if those grades are up, maybe you'll get a scholarship. Maybe you'll get into that school or university that you weren't sure you were gonna get into. So it is, it's, a long, it's a long marathon that you've got ahead of you. Even if you're a senior, you've got a lot ahead of you in this last year. So take your time, reread everything, ask for help, get that support, and you will make it to the finish line. I can guarantee you will make it there. It may not look like it, but you will get there. I would say to just be open-minded. Um, your guidance counselors have met with so many different colleges and universities. And if you don't like one thing or a couple of things about a certain college or university, um, your counselor might think that you're a good fit for it and just try and reach out to the university. You can reach out to the admission counselor. You can sit in on a virtual session, maybe even visit because you never know. Um, sometimes that happens to a lot of students that it was their last choice and they ended up going there and they absolutely love it. I mean, there's so many different stories of current students that go through that. So that would just be my advice to keep your mind open. Uh, my advice would be use the schools that are nearby as kind of a template for your search overall. And what I mean by that is like, you know, you may be thinking in your head, ooh, I want to go to a big, you know, 50,000 size student school out in California. And that's an awesome idea. But before you get on that plane, maybe check out the largest public university that's within an hour drive of you. And if it seems like a good fit, you like the size, you like the flow of campus, then maybe that's a good clue. Okay, let me get on the plane. Let me check it, things out in the West Coast. Whereas if you realize, mm, maybe I'm looking for something smaller, maybe I'm looking for that city feel, you know, you have so many great colleges right here in the area. So kind of get some clues, get some ideas of what you like, and then you can expand your search outward based on those initial uh, experiences. I think going off of that too, just visiting in general is going to be so helpful during this process because you may find that if you visit someone's campus, you know, you'll get a, oh, excuse me, a fee waiver to apply for free, which as you start building your list, you're going to realize that, you know, it's not free to apply for college. And if you're applying to 10 colleges and, you know, it's $50 per application fee, you know, that's a lot of money that you're putting out there. So if you're able to find those opportunities, um, but then also kind of narrow down your list through doing all those visits, um, you know, like Steve said, locally, you know, that's really helpful too, just to get an idea. Um, and then listen to your gut, as silly as that sounds, because you're going to be spending a lot of time in college and you want to make sure you really like the area that you're in, whether it's going to see what mall is local, you know, what type of food chains are around that area, you know, what does there do outside of the campus, because you might have a moment where you love your college, but you want to go explore elsewhere sometimes, and that's more than okay to do that. So, you know, realize that it's a big investment, but there's a lot of great people that'll help you along the way, like all of us. I always say, um, create a list of what you think your dream school looks like. Um, is it in the city? Is it in the suburbs? What does the college life look like? What does 
Greek life look like? What does the town look like? Just create a list. And once you go on these college visits, go back and check your list and see which school um, has checked off your list. Um, because you know that's what you wanted to do before you went to the campus. You've already had it in your mind what to expect and what your dream school looks like. Thank you all so much for joining us. Great advice presenters. Um, students, when you close, there will be a quick five question survey. We would greatly appreciate you filling that out. Sign up for more sessions. This is just one of the many available and a recording of this will be available at strivescan.com slash Burlington. With that, I'll say have a great evening and thanks everyone.